How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. And it's some bourbon barrel aged coffee stout time. Some hopeful, fantastic shit, because I have very high hopes for this. Totally going into this with preconceived notions of grandeur. Uh, we have um, Dudaciel's uh, Pesh Mortel Bourbon Barrel Aged. First things first, thank you very much, Jacob. Jacob, viewer, watcher, sent me a beer mail a while ago. He sent me to um, um, do to CL. Oh, no, actually, it was uh, La Trosse Muscatarius beers he sent last time, and he just dropped a beer mail last night. I got home really late. This was in it, and uh, a whole bunch of awesome goodness, but this one was in it, and I couldn't even wait 24 hours to drink this beer. So thank you very much, dude, for uh, sending this my way. Can't wait to crack into this. Let's dive into it, because I need it inside my belly, hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully I'm not disappointed. High hopes. It's a lot to live up to. Anyway, as far as what it says on this bottle, it says Pesh Mortel. Uh, it's a stout. Uh, extra strong stout brewed with coffee. Uh, so it's one of my favorite coffee stouts ever made. It's in the top five. There's ones that have kind of skirted above it. Double shot from uh, Treehouse. Maybe, I think there might be one more that I'm forgetting. If I'm forgetting it, probably not. But yeah, up there, 9.5% alcohol by volume. And on the back here, we have espresso coffees infused, <coughs> excuse me, during the first, uh, brewing of Peche Mortel, resulting in intense dark beer uh, with roasted malt flavors enhanced by bitter coffee. Drink with moderation. Um, this was bottled in November 2016, November 7th. Uh, so you're talking about November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Seven months. But like I said, bourbon barrel aged version. Um, that's the big difference here. You got a little bourbon tag on the side here, bourbon tag up there. Label is essentially the same except for the bourbon tags. And I am okay with that. Uh, so yeah. Cool label. Is what it is. Throwing this Nova S glass. Curious, do they still do twisties? I know they used to do twisties. They still do twisties. I love fucking do this yell. That they still fucking do twist stops. I don't know why that makes me fucking so happy. Oh my god. Because I know they changed. Give it a pour here. And I'll talk. I know they changed um, their um, dating and a bit of their labeling. Like uh, on the back here you can actually see what the date is. As I read it off. Um, it used to be this weird code. So I didn't know if they would keep with the fucking twisty tops. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. Uh, pinky finger, uh, malt and malt, all the colored head, and she's dark. How about that for a review? Uh, I think that's all I have to say about the actual look of the beer because that's all there is. Nice creaminess to it, but uh, let's get a nose on her. <sighs> Huge barrel char. I'm getting iced tea. I just got iced tea from it. Not the wrapper, but like the actual like powdered iced tea. That's a weird one. Yeah, huge barrel char. Nice, rich, chocolate, smoky barrel char. There's a bourbon there, but it doesn't seem too hot. It seems more aged, more older, more like the barrel sat for a bit, and it's not poured into a super fresh bourbon barrel. There's a weird, funky mustiness to it. I'm not in a bad way. It's just I mean, take a huge huff of it. I kind of get this weird kind of funkiness. But it reminds me of old beer, so I'm cool with it. And I get the weird iced tea vibes. I don't know where that's coming from. But at the same time, the beer's there. And you get a nice bittering kind of roasted malt from it. Um, and you get a nice sweetness from it. I dare to say there's even a little bittering, maybe even from some hops. I know that's fucking weird, but I'm fucking weird. But it smells rich, deep, dark. It smells a lot like Pesh Mortel, but with a lot more barrel charriness to it. And that little bit of charriness that kind of comes through. I tend to get a little bit of cherry on these bigger, darker beers um, with coffee sometimes too. So I'm not going to say that's necessarily a new thing on this beer. But the char is the biggest thing on here. You're going to get a big, hefty kind of barrel char. So she smells good. She looks good. Hopefully she tastes good. Cheers. I like it. I like it. I'm not going to say I love it, though. Here's the thing. 
some epically awesome beers, coffee beers, or even beers in general. Uh, Choco Visa was one of them. Um, I think some of the Hardywood bases I could be wrong. Um, gingerbread comes to mind. Some of them are so great in their base that when they get barrel aged, they tend to lose a little bit of what makes them special. I kind of feel like that's happening with this beer. This is a delicious beer. I'm not trying to say it's not. And while I get the beer and I get the coffee, there's a weird neutral location in the beer. When I we usually drink Pesh Mortel, I have this wash of this of this rich um, stoutiness in coffee that kind of washes over my tongue. And it's really what makes my fucking butthole get tight. I mean, this is it's what really turns me on about this beer. And it, it it's it it starts that way and it kind of loses something. There's like this void. And then it picks back up and then I get a little bear char, char. I get a little bit of bourbon. And it lingers with that. But there's that middle part. The crescendo of the beer is missing. And it's not... I mean, I'm, it, it's still fantastic. But if you kind of, you know, gun to my head, said, which one do you want? Do you want the bourbon? Do you want the base? Probably go base, to be honest with you. Hmm. First swallow. Roasted malt barrel char. In the middle, kind of dips. There's a whole lot of nothing. A little bit of roasted malt, but it's very kind of a void in there. Then it kind of brings back, you get a little bit more coffee. A little barrel char. Um, some kind of bourbony sweetness, and then it kind of just washes out, and you're left with a roasted malt, roasted coffee kind of vibe. It's good. It's delicious. I like it. I uh, but I, again, like I said, I don't think I love it as much as I love the base. Um, I've wanted to try this for years. Again, preconceived notion going into it. I kind of led into that when I actually was doing this review. I said I expect big things, but at the same time, I actually heard some things about this beer, so I didn't. I wasn't like this is going to be great. I said. I hope it's great, but I don't know if it's going to be great. Let's go into it as as neutral as I can, uh, which is hard to do when you have preconceived notions, but I try. And I think it's delicious. I would never turn this beer away. They saw it on draft, or I never had it before, and there was a bottle, and I can get it without rapey prices or horrible prices. I just say rapey people getting you know, their button in you know, weird state. A aggressively priced whatever. Um, yeah. I I just I'd go base. I would. I would. I would go base on this. Um, but it's a fun experience. And I want to try it for so long. So thank you very much, Jacob, for sending this off. Super fun beer. Um, let me talk about it. Is it one of the better barrel aged coffee stouts I've had as of late? On the outside looking in, but very close. It's still that good. It just I've had some ones that really have done it for me. Um, value availability, no idea. Uh, I could I haven't been able to pick it up even in my trips to Canada. So um, if Jacob would chime in or somebody else, let me know what the availability on this is and how much it costs. That would be fantastic. And just say if you like what we like, is, if you like coffee stouts aged in bourbon, because for me coffee does get lost every now and then in bourbon barrels. So um, it's nice. If you like bourbon, if you like coffee, if you like, if you like Pesh Mortel and you really want to try, try it. Let's put it this way. If you have access to this and you have access to the base, it's a really good kind of um, a test bed to see the difference where, where barreling can actually change a beer. I'm not saying for the worse or for better. I'm just saying change. It, it's a really, it would be a really fun beer to do side by side to see what happens. Some people might love the difference. Some people might say it, it drops like myself. So this is probably one of the perfect beers, I think, to put up on a, um, on a kind of, on a panel like that to see how it changes. So if you're into experimentation, if you're into good beer, it's still a fantastic beer. And if you're into um, stuff and things, I ran out of things to say. Who'd have thunk it? Then it's worth picking up. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, if you did, didn't. Anywhere in between. 
I usually do this when I say check me out somewhere else. Um, and, uh, yeah, leave words down there. If you want to check me out anywhere else, uh, Massive Beers, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, attempt. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed your review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice Burn Barrel Age coffee stout right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>